Good morning. We are extremely pleased that you are here. You are knowing what you are wanting. You are appreciating the evolution of your desire. You are understanding that there is never any reason for your desire to be other than fresh and new. No point in ever having an old, stale, unfulfilled desire, is there? (laughs) No reason for it when you understand that whenever you ask, it is always given. So you must be wondering. I've been asking for such and such for quite a while, and since it hasn't shown up, what's up with that? And we say, that's what this gathering is about. To help you realize that when you ask, it is given, and if your stuff has not yet shown up, then it must be because you are a vibrational match to its absence rather than to its presence. Or if there's something that you have that you don't want and it won't go away, you must be a vibrational match to its presence. That's easy to do, isn't it? Because whatever is tends to get quite a bit of your attention. So if what is is not pleasing you and it has your attention... It does not go away because it has your attention. You can't shout no at it and make it go away because in a universe that is based upon law of attraction, in a vibrational universe, no means yes. Yes doesn't mean no. Yes means yes too. No means yes and yes means yes. (laughs) Attention to it means yes. Attention to it means Since I'm looking at you, I've activated you in my vibration. And then Law of Attraction says, what's activated in you will come to you. So if you're seeing something you want and you're shouting, yes, yes, more of that, please, the universe says, but of course. And if you look at something, you say, no, no, never. That's the last thing on this earth that I would ever want. The universe says, we're sending it right to you. And you say, but no, you are misunderstanding me. I don't want this. And the universe says, here it comes. And you say, no, no, hear my words. And the universe says, we hear your vibration. Your words are irrelevant. Interesting, isn't it? So all that shouting was for naught. All that proclaiming and affirming, no value whatsoever. All of that conversation, no value at all. No, we wouldn't say that. Conversation is wonderful. Conversation brings focus to a subject. We are visiting with a lot of words in the hours that are before us here today. And because of your words and Esther's translation of our blocks of thought into words, we are able to focus similarly and take thought beyond that which it has been before. But we do want to get your attention by helping you to realize that Until you understand what you're offering vibrationally, then you cannot be the deliberate creator of your own experience. If you are offering vibrations unaware of their content, then you are not the deliberate creator. We call that creating by default. Of course, you cannot offer vibration and be unaware of your vibration for long, really, because law of attraction brings you manifestations that match your vibration. So once you understand that what you're thinking and what you're getting always matches, then after the fact, once you've got it, then you can understand it was your vibration. Not as rewarding in that way, however, to receive it and then say, oh yeah, that was my vibration. I didn't do it on purpose. I just vibrated all over the place. I vibrate on a lot of things, you say, and I get a lot of things. Some of them I like, some of them I don't like. We say, might be worth paying attention. Paying attention to what you're thinking about. But then you notice that that is extremely cumbersome. To monitor thoughts sort of makes you crazy. To sort out the thoughts that are moving around your environment Very difficult task. So we suggest that rather than monitoring thoughts or trying to catalog thoughts and put them in appropriate pile and inappropriate pile, that instead you just use the guidance system that you were born with. 
this magnificent guidance system that will always help you to know if you are on course to the things that you want or not. Your guidance system is always calculating from where you are where you want to be. So where you have been truly is irrelevant. Why does where you've been factor in at all? For one reason. Because where you've been got your attention. And as it got your attention, you began offering vibrations about it. And as you began offering vibrations about it, you learned patterns of vibrations, habits of vibrations. You call them beliefs. A belief is just a thought that you keep thinking. So once you have decided something in your now, there's a pretty good chance for most of you that you're going to continue to decide it, to continue to think it, to continue to believe it, to continue to offer a vibration about it. So you continue to take your vibrational point wherever you are, which is why as you move through space and time, often faces change, places change, but the essence of what you're living doesn't change very much because your vibrational patterns don't change very much. Once you've decided something, you keep beating the drum of it. And as you beat the drum of it, you offer a signal. And as you offer a signal, law of attraction matches your signal. So you say, I'm stuck. And we say, it's not possible. You can't be stuck because everything's in motion. And you say, no, I'm pretty sure I'm stuck. It feels stuck. And we say, you can't be stuck because everything's in motion. You say, no, I'm pretty sure I'm stuck. And we say, you can't be stuck because things are always changing. But if it feels like you're stuck, it's because things are changing over and over and over again to the same thing. They're changing to the same thing. So let's say your body is sick and you would like it to change to a body that's well. It can. It can do that easily. But if you keep beating the drum of being sick, if you keep talking about how long you've been sick, if you keep going to the doctor and he keeps taking pictures of how sick you are, and tying labels to your toe that indicate how sick you are. Well, that's sick, isn't it? <laughs> then what happens is you keep changing to the same thing over and over again. So you say, it isn't changing, and we say, but it is. It's changing. It must be changing. Everything's changing. You can't stand still. That's like listening to a song on the radio and saying, I like that note. Hold it. It can't. It's going to keep offering more signal and the radio receiver is going to keep receiving and translating the signal. You can't hold the song in place and you can't hold the thought in place and you can't hold your experience in place. It is changing, 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 changing. Leave here saying, my life is changing, 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 changing. It's changing. Is it changing to what I want or is it changing to more of what I've already got? You don't really like the word change that way, do you? You don't like the word changing unless things are becoming different. But we want you to think of it in terms of it's changing to the similar thing over and over and over again because then you become empowered about changing it to different things. You can't find a thought that's very far from the thought you've been thinking. Someone said to us recently, Abraham, I know you say that I think the thoughts, but it feels to me like my thoughts think me. But a lot of times it doesn't feel like I have chosen them at all. I just wake up and there they are. They are sort of consuming. And what we want to say to you is you can change those thoughts. You can change those vibrations. But don't ask yourself to do something that is impossible. Don't set your radio dial on 6.30 a.m. and expect to hear what's being broadcast on 96 FM. They are different frequencies. And so law of attraction is acting the same way upon your thoughts. If you're offering thoughts that are in a vibration that when you think them, it feels like depression or discouragement to you. And someone says, well, you know, you should follow your bliss. You can't make that jump. It's a vibrational quantum leap that is illogical. You might be able to change the subject and you might be able to feel better on a different subject. But on that subject that you've been practicing, you cannot quantum leap into the new place all at once. And we think that the majority of the discouragement that you feel about not being able to move from your stuck place on different topics is that you've attempted to take too big of a jump and you can't make the jump. And because you can't make the jump, then you get discouraged and you go back to focusing upon what is. So, nobody else has to figure this out. Don't worry if your government doesn't understand it. Don't worry if your mother doesn't understand it. 
Don't worry if the people that you work with don't understand it. They don't have to understand it. Only you have to understand it. And when you understand it, you have control of the circumstances and events of your life. It is our promise to you that once you clean up your vibration, once you offer a vibration that matches your desire, everything that you want will flow easily, effortlessly, quickly into your experience. Nice to know. So, as we feel you, we can only feel one bugaboo that is coming from you, and that is, do I have the right to create my own reality? And we say, you better, because nobody else is doing it. <laughs> you say, is it all right for me to be selfish enough to do what feels good to me? And we say, well, let's think about that. What are they saying to you? The others who don't want you to selfishly satisfy what feels better to you. They're saying, please me. So when someone says to you, don't be selfish, what they're saying is, don't you be selfish, I want to be selfish. I want you to satisfy what I need, not what you need. And we say, there's not logic in that, is there? Everyone is selfishly oriented. Every consciousness, every point of consciousness, every cell in your body is selfishly attracting. The one-celled amoeba in the ocean is attracting. Every point of consciousness has its personal point of perception and from that point of perception its personal best is being born the evolution of the universe is all about that and think about how wonderful that is imagine a village of a thousand people a thousand people all having experiences with each other and each one getting a new idea of what would make his individual experience better and source saying but of course and not just one is being answered every single one isn't that a nice place to live? Some place where everyone has direct access to the infinite source of whatever is desired? There's no competition. There's no shortage. In fact, the infinite stream expands in proportion to the desires that are being offered. The imbalance that we see in your Earth's time-space reality is that the contrast has caused you, as billions of people, to launch incredible desires that are out there in a vibrational escrow while you hold to mores and ideals and beliefs and rules and systems that consistently hold you in vibrational discord with the things that you're asking for. And so there's a frustration level as innately you know that things should be going well for all and then some figure it out and get into a place of allowing and then others condemn them for getting all the good stuff and we say you only can teach through the clarity of your example and when you thrive you are an example of thriving and if others are interested and they ask you then you can tell them I learned to focus upon what made me feel good and then good things came to me I used to focus on things that didn't feel so good and things that didn't feel so good came to me I began to watch others I began to make the correlation of how they seemed to feel and what was happening to them and I came to the clear conclusion that we all create our own reality and that we get what we think about and how we feel is always an indicator of what's coming and then it became easy easy for me to guide myself when I go to a buffet table and I get something in my mouth that tastes awful I don't do it again <laughs> when I turn on the television and I see something that horrifies me I turn it off and look for something that feels better when I get in the middle of a conversation with someone that's so annoying and uncomfortable I say excuse me please I walk away when I reminisce on my own life and I find a thought that was painful when it happened and painful every time I've thought about it I release it as I reach for another thought that feels better I've discovered that I can control the way I feel because I can direct my attention to subjects. I am the creator of my own reality. That's what you want to tell them. And then you might say, and you are too. One last thing, don't tell them unless they're asking. <laughs> like pushing a noodle, not much fun. <laughs>